At the dawn of the Stone Age, hominins commenced the production of stone tools, and they began the transition from being mere animals engaged in the pursuit of other animals to becoming human. Indeed, throughout an extensive period spanning hundreds of thousands of years, early human populations sustained themselves by relying on simple stone tools. Their sustenance was likely obtained through a combination of hunting and scavenging for the remains of deceased animals. Notably, the tools employed by these ancient humans were relatively basic, consisting primarily of rudimentary blades crafted from stone that had been skillfully chipped to achieve razor-sharp edges. However, recent evidence indicates that mysterious early human populations traverse significant portions of the Earth, long before the previously established timeline. This predates the existence of modern humans by a significant margin, far preceding their emergence in history. The discovery implies that there were multiple instances in which ancient humans migrated out of the cradle of Africa, although the outcomes of these migratory events were not uniformly successful. For example, the diminutive Indonesian hominin is postulated to have originated from a lineage that departed from Africa, approximately two million years in the past. The current understanding of the enigmatic Homo floresiensis, commonly referred to as the Hobbit, has once again undergone a significant revision. Recent research indicates that the diminutive hominin species underwent evolutionary development, originating from an unidentified precursor, which represents the earliest known instance of migration beyond the African continent. Similar to Homo naledi in South Africa, the hobbit is a hominin characterized by its diminutive physical stature and limited cranial capacity, distinguishing it from the large-brained human species. In fact, they are not considered human although the species is placed in our genus. The presence of fire usage by the hobbit lacks empirical evidence, albeit this is subject to ongoing debate. What's more, the utilization of spears by the aforementioned species lacks supporting evidence, but it appears that their dietary practices involve the consumption of pygmy elephants and juvenile Komodo dragons. If an individual possesses the cognitive capacity to craft a stone tool, and employ it with precision for the purpose of skillfully dismembering an animal, it is likely that they also possess the cognitive capacity to seize a lengthy, pointed implement and employ it for the act of puncturing an animal. The initial findings of the extinct species were initially unearthed on the island of Flores in Indonesia, slightly more than 20 years ago. Nonetheless, a contentious discourse persists regarding the origins of these remains. There is a possibility that Homo floresiensis underwent evolutionary processes in Africa before migrating to other regions, or alternatively, that the common ancestor of Homo floresiensis originated in Africa, and subsequently underwent evolutionary changes leading to the emergence of Homo floresiensis in a different geographical location. According to the previous hypothesis, it is postulated that subsequent to the arrival of individuals from the larger-bodied cohort on the island of Flores, a gradual reduction in stature occurred, resulting in a diminutive average height of approximately 1 meter, or 3 feet. This phenomenon is attributed to the limited availability of resources within the island's ecosystem. Yet, the present analysis, which is the most extensive to date, indicates that the hobbits can be traced back to an enigmatic precursor that inhabited Africa more than two million years ago. A portion of individuals from this ancestral population chose to remain in Africa and underwent evolutionary changes, eventually giving rise to Homo habilis, who are recognized as the earliest creators of stone tools. As this ancestral lineage dispersed across the regions of South and Southeast Asia, it underwent a gradual transformation, ultimately evolving into the species known as Homo floresiensis. Furthermore, Homo floresiensis exhibited a higher degree of genetic similarity to Homo habilis in comparison to Homo erectus, indicating a shared ancestry and suggesting its origin from an ancient lineage. This is further supported by its comparatively rudimentary and smaller physical structure. The ancestors of the hobbit likely became extinct throughout Asia due to the emergence of larger and more sophisticated human species, such as Homo erectus. The hobbit's ability to persist in Flores for an extended period was likely facilitated by its geographical isolation, and there is a lack of fossil evidence suggesting the presence of Homo erectus on the island. It is possible though that Homo floresiensis occupied other neighboring islands, which form one larger island when sea levels were lower. Thus, it is imperative to reconsider the timing of hominin migration out of Africa. New research has demonstrated that the earliest evidence discovered outside of Africa, dates back to a minimum of 2.1 million years ago. The discovery of stone tools in central China, on the Lurs Plateau, 
has significant implications for our understanding of the species responsible for the migration out of Africa. These findings challenge existing knowledge regarding the earliest instances of tool usage beyond the African continent. Although the recent finding in China indicates the existence of human activity, the scientists have not yet uncovered any early human remains at the location. A significant number of early stone tools, which were abandoned, have been discovered through excavation efforts. These artifacts were found beneath multiple layers of consolidated sand. The majority of these artifacts consist of chipped stone flakes, which are primitive blades formed through the process of striking two river-smooth cobbles against each other. The utilization of this technology has been observed among hominins in Africa during the corresponding time frame. In the 20th century, there was a prevailing narrative regarding the migration of humanity from Africa, which posited Homo erectus as a significant ancestral figure. Homo erectus, characterized by its relatively large brain size and tall stature, embarked on extensive journeys across Asia, over a million years ago. However, in recent decades, emerging evidence has started to challenge the accuracy of this timeline. The recent archaeological findings in China have revealed the presence of newly discovered stone tools, suggesting that an individual or group of individuals may have traversed a distance of approximately 8,000 miles, from Africa to East Asia around 2.12 million years ago. These findings also suggest that the entity responsible for this migration is likely to have been a species other than Homo erectus. In the study published in the esteemed journal Nature, researchers have reported the discovery of 80 stone artifacts within 11 distinct layers of soil in central China. These soil layers were deposited during a period characterized by warm and wet climatic conditions. Additionally, a total of 16 artifacts were discovered across six stratigraphic layers, which can be attributed to a period characterized by colder and drier climatic conditions. These migrations may have occurred prior to the most severe periods of the contemporary ice ages. Approximately 2 million years ago, the Earth experienced significant fluctuations in temperature. Yet, the extensive glaciations that occurred over the past million years had not yet brought glaciation from the North Pole. It is probable that the plateau underwent cyclic transitions between arid steppe and moist grassland environments, at intervals of approximately 40,000 years. The availability of tools on the site also appears to diminish during these cold and arid periods, indicating that ancient human populations had limited capacity to adapt to non-tropical environments. It is important to highlight that the study does not assert a continuous habitation of Asia by hominins, over the course of the past two million years. Significantly, the researchers successfully established the chronological sequence of soil layers through the utilization of paleomagnetism, a scientific method that involves examining specific minerals that exhibit alignment with the Earth's magnetic field, which undergoes intermittent reversals. The most ancient artifacts were discovered within a geological stratum situated between rock formations, that were formed approximately 2.14 million years ago and 1.85 million years ago. Based on the researcher's analysis, it is estimated that six of the tools possess an age of approximately 2.12 million years, rendering them the most ancient stone tools discovered beyond the geographical boundaries of Africa. Nonetheless, the discovery does not necessarily imply that Homo erectus reached China at an earlier time than previously hypothesized. Um, and now why would, uh, why would you say something like that? Indeed. It is postulated that Homo erectus had not yet undergone complete evolutionary development by this particular period, thereby implying that the discovered artifacts indicate the expansion of an entirely distinct hominin species, towards the eastern regions of Asia. The ramifications of this phenomenon are significant, and it is imperative to reassess our comprehension of human prehistory in the Eurasian region. If Homo erectus was not the species inhabiting China during that time, then which species can be identified as the inhabitants during that ancient period? The discovery of a significant collection of fossils in Dmanasai, Georgia, has provided valuable insights into the study of hominins. This site, previously recognized as the oldest hominin location outside of Africa, offers the potential to enhance our understanding of this subject matter. The assemblage consisted of lithic implements and, of greater significance, a fragment of a cranium belonging to a hominin of diminutive cranial capacity and stature. It is plausible that this particular species or a similar one underwent expansion across the Eurasian continent. However, it is also possible that the precise chronology of Homo erectus remains uncertain. 
there is a likelihood that Homo erectus inhabited China during the specified period. Moreover, considering the considerable antiquity of the site and the potential discovery of artifacts from even earlier periods, it is plausible that another member of the Homo genus, resembling a smaller ancestor akin to Homo habilis, could have inhabited Asia first. Indeed, it is plausible that numerous hominin species or populations departed from Africa, subsequently experiencing extinction at various points during their dispersal across the Old World. Certain populations migrated to Eastern Asia, although it is plausible to surmise that these groups were relatively small and primarily engaged in scavenging and gathering activities, certain populations may have experienced isolation, leading to potential extinction. For example, various species of Australopithecus, a hominin that coexisted with Homo habilis in Africa for a span of approximately 500,000 years, persisted exclusively within the African continent for millions of years, without exhibiting any discernible evidence of migration beyond its borders. Approximately 2.1 million years ago, the emergence of the first fossils belonging to our genus coincided with the sudden discovery of indications suggesting the existence of ancient humans in various regions of the old world. Due to their carnivorous nature, ancient humans would not have attained the same level of abundance as herbivores, which occupy a lower trophic level within the food chain. Certain individuals may have undergone further evolutionary changes, potentially resulting in the emergence of distinct species. For instance, recent research suggests that Homo floresiensis, an Indonesian hominin, might have evolved at an earlier period than previously hypothesized. According to the prevailing model of human evolution, the initial dispersal of hominins from Africa occurred subsequent to the emergence of Homo erectus, a species believed to have evolved over two million years ago. Nevertheless, the discovery of Homo floresiensis presents an intriguing prospect of an earlier migration of hominins, who were likely not fully human, from Africa. The analyses also lend support to the hypothesis that Homo floresiensis may have diverged at an earlier point in time, exceeding 1.75 million years ago. If this scenario were to be true, it would imply that Homo floresiensis had undergone evolution prior to the emergence of the earliest Homo habilis, thus suggesting a significantly archaic nature for the former. The discourse surrounding the source of these minuscule remnants has persisted since their discovery. What was the symbolic significance of the bones? Homo floresiensis and its predecessors inhabited the island of Flores, for a duration spanning approximately 1 million to 50,000 years in the past. Their habitation primarily consisted of utilizing limestone caves and settling along the shores of streams and lakes, all within the vicinity of active volcanic regions. The landscape exhibited tropical characteristics and was inhabited by diminutive elephants, colossal rats, and Komodo dragons. According to the available information, one hypothesis posits that the skeletal remains originated from Homo erectus, a direct precursor of contemporary humans and the initial hominid species to inhabit Southeast Asia. There have been assertions made regarding the phenomenon of insular dwarfism experienced by Homo floresiensis, an interesting creature. Insular dwarfism refers to the tendency of animals residing on islands to undergo a reduction in size over an extended period. However, a recent study presents findings that challenge this hypothesis, providing support for an alternative notion that the hobbits actually originated prior to Homo erectus, evolving concurrently with Homo habilis, a species that existed between 2.4 and 1.4 million years ago. Therefore, available evidence indicates that Homo floresiensis can be classified as a sister species to Homo habilis, implying a probable ancestral connection between the two lineages. Through the application of statistical analysis, the investigators observed notable dissimilarities in the skeletal composition of the hobbit in comparison to Homo erectus, with particular emphasis on the mandible and pelvic region. The results of the study are definitive. Homo floresiensis occupied a relatively basal position within the human evolutionary lineage. It is highly probable, with a 99% confidence level, that the specimen under consideration is not associated with Homo erectus. It is plausible that the predecessor of the hobbit species experienced extinction in Asia due to the arrival of larger hominin species, such as Homo erectus, into the region. Nevertheless, the hobbits residing on the island of Flores managed to persist until approximately 60,000 years ago, coinciding with the period when Homo sapiens departed Africa and commenced their migration into Asia. Nonetheless, it is highly probable that the discourse surrounding the origins of the hobbit remains unresolved. In recent years, several studies have been published, 
that present both corroborating and refuting evidence regarding the taxonomic relationship between the diminutive hominid and Homo erectus. Meanwhile, with the completion of each study, scientists gain incremental knowledge, gradually assembling the intricate puzzle of our complex lineage. According to the researchers, their findings indicate that the species in question utilized stone tools similar to those crafted by their ancestors upon their arrival, on the island, a minimum of 840,000 years ago. This date is significant, because it was just prior to a major pole reversal and meteor impact in the region around 790,000 years ago. While the discovery of hominin skeletal remains has been limited to two flores sites, the presence of a rudimentary stone toolkit has been documented at various sites, with some dating back as far as one million years ago. The origin of the hominin toolmaking tradition can be traced back to Africa, specifically with the emergence of stone flaking techniques, approximately 3.3 million years ago. Stone toolkits facilitated the ability of our predecessors to extract meat from animal carcasses and subsequently divide it into smaller portions, thereby rendering it more amenable to mastication and digestion. Enhanced availability of meat played a pivotal role in the evolutionary process leading to increased body size and, notably, expanded cranial capacity. Until this point in time, it has been widely believed that there exists a positive correlation between brain size and cognitive abilities in hominids, suggesting that individuals with larger brains are generally considered to be more intelligent. The phenomenon being referred to is commonly recognized as encephalization. Nevertheless, these results indicate that it is possible that this is not true. Regardless of their cranial capacity, Homo floresiensis demonstrated the ability to manufacture stone tools, suggesting that the conventional narrative, regarding the correlation between brain size and behavioral complexity in human evolution, may be more nuanced than presently believed. Yet, the assumed causal relationship between brain size and the complexity of tool behavior in humans has not been empirically demonstrated. Until recently, the presence of stone tools has exclusively been observed in conjunction with hominids of considerable size, and possessing relatively large brains. However, the discovery of Homo floresiensis challenges this prevailing notion, thereby necessitating a reassessment of the correlation between enhanced cognitive capacity and advanced behavioral patterns. What ultimately transpired with regard to the fate of Homo floresiensis? The extinction of the species is believed to have occurred shortly after the migration of Homo sapiens out of Africa, approximately 60,000 years ago, as they expanded into the Asian continent. The potential occurrence of a conflict between the two distinct species may have contributed to the demise of the enigmatic Indonesian hobbits. Nonetheless, it is improbable that this will be the sole revelation concerning early humans from China. The predominant focus of paleoanthropologists has been directed towards the exploration of hominins in Africa, with substantial allocation of time and resources. So an augmented emphasis on conducting fieldwork in China and other regions of Asia is expected to yield additional revelations, regarding the progressively intricate genealogy of the human species.